most of you know that it is thanks to the love and support of this community that we were able to build a village for special needs children out in Tanzania. That village now provides a safe and loving home to nearly 200 children that were living in crisis. Most of these children are special needs, but a lot of these children were homeless and the majority have no parents or guardians in this world other than the family that this community has allowed us to create. Everything that we do is made possible thanks to partners. Those who choose to partner with our family and with it make everything that we do possible and keep our doors open for the next children who need some help or a safe and loving family home. If you'd like to hear more about our partnership programme, you can do so by visiting www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership. Thank you for all of the love and support, guys. We couldn't do this without you. Over the years, I've mentioned the pineal gland, or the third eye. And when I have, it's had a very mixed response. There's a lot of fear about the human anatomy and the elements that we don't understand. And this is being done by fundamentalist religious preachers, teachers, scaring people away and from their own body. And so I want to speak on it and clear that up a little bit as well. Because over the years as well I've witnessed the error in people. People saying, I want to activate my third eye, I want to open my pineal. And yet when you see them, that's clearly something they don't understand and actually persons have terrible experiences I've met them and I have great empathy for them because many such persons who say these things the foundation of their life the activity of the flesh or if you take my recent linguistic framework where I was exploring the notion that an alien species genetically interfered with our human body negatively, perhaps positively at some point as well and put stuff inside our mind, our brain, to make us a slave so the activity of the alien slave technology perhaps, the flesh, whichever linguistic term you want to use is vibrationally as such that persons go into a practice where they are entering stillness and elevating their vibration and elevating your vibration doesn't guarantee that you're going to the angelic realm I've said in a recent video in this country the children we protect from the witch doctor religions etc those witch doctors fast but they do it to bring harm and so they elevate their vibration and they meet with higher dimensional negative entities, higher spiritual powers that are demonic, you can call it. And so persons go into a practice and they go into meditation and stillness and they have these horrible experiences because the activity of their waking life is not in order. And so most persons then retreat back to something and they go to the teachings of Yeshua and they find the comfort they find the, the love and the peace of God there because now they recognize there's some law here, there's some spiritual law. You know, the fundamentalists have also wrecked the word sin. It's spiritual law that we have in this dimension of reality. And so the foundation of the spiritual life comes back in order because the foundation of the spiritual life is the human body in, in our manifestation here. 
And so when the human body is misbehaving and you try to elevate, if your thoughts, your words and your deeds are not coherent, then you're going to come off track. And so this is where people come into a space where they are, unfortunately, influenced by the negative and they return back to a stable life with the right morality, the right behaviors, and it dissipates, and rightly so. Vibration and frequency is the language of God. And vibration and frequency is also the language of the fallen ones, of the devil. Humanity has not been shown this, and yet there are those that know it. The sacred secretion is biblical. Yeshua, Christ and the sacred secretion are inseparable. The Bible references this in its mystic language frequently. The oil of gladness is the most clear depiction of what I'm referencing. The Lord has anointed you with the oil of gladness because you have lived righteously above your peers. A certain state of life, a certain state of consciousness activates this sacred secretion because frequency is the language of God. And that unfortunate truth means that if you are in a low frequency, which the world, the system, the fallen matrix of Satan that you are in is, is working to hold you in a low frequency. It's working to hold you there with fear. It's pinning you down, entertainment, how we can call it that, that fills you with fear and dread and darkness. When you look at the Bible and you look at something like baptism, baptism is a beautiful thing. A human is baptized with water, they make an agreement, they're going to live by a certain set of rules. Wonderful, great, we need that, we need to do that. We have to know how to function as a good self in human society. This is great, but what of the other side of baptism? In human modern science, we have used technology to measure the frequency of the human brain. We say beta, alpha, theta, delta are the brain waves. In ancient times, they had no apparatus. So they measured it by experiencing that state of consciousness, by being an inner engineer, by looking at the workings of the self, by sitting with the self, by sitting with the organism in awareness, in that state of being loving awareness and attentive to what's going on. And they're witnessed for frequencies of the brain as well, states of consciousness, earth, water, air, fire. You must be baptized with water, you must move from beta to alpha, you must be baptized with fire. You must theta, delta. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, one comes after me who will baptize you with fire, earth, water, air, fire. These are frequency shifts, higher states of consciousness. That's why Yeshua said, when you fast, not if, when. Because your frequency will shift, your vibration will shift. For the spirit of this world to drain energy from man by having him hooked on pornography or on whatever else, gambling, worldly pursuits, it, the requirement is to have humans who are capable of building the structures to make that happen. And so some humans do elevate this, but they do it in the name of the wrong spirit. And some amnesically don't recognize what is going on because as a Christian can walk in the Holy Spirit without knowing the anatomy, so too can someone serve the spirit of this world without knowing the anatomy or even that they are serving the spirit of this world. And this is one of the greatest deceptions of Satan, to trick humanity into not realizing that Satan is there and what Satan's needs are, to take energy from the soul force of man. 
by enslaving him to the world instead of allowing that energy to build to serve the voice of creator the sacred secretion what is this the ancient seer in the claustrum of the brain that a special substance is secreted every month and it unites with a Christ seed, a psychophysical germ that is born out of the sacred place, the sacral plexus. That anointing travels through the 33 vertebrae. It is the Christ inside the human organism. Jesus was crucified at the age of 33. The secretion, the chrism, is crucified at the 33rd vertebrae. It returns up through the 33 vertebrae if the life is one of purity. Purity is what? It's aligning with the heart of God and allowing the mimicking of the actions of the organism to bring forth that love into the world. Impurity is to take energy that you don't need. If you live in purity, the chrism will rise. As it rises, it passes through the hypoglossal, the 12th cranial nerve, through the olive. Still to this day, the olive of the hypoglossal is a term in medical science. And you must be anointed with olive oil. We are still rubbing oil on the head, religious ritual. But the frequency change of the organism living in purity, so they are anointed with the oil of gladness in the temple of God. It rises, it enters the hypothalamus, it stays there. It stays there for two and a half days in the tomb, just as Yeshua had stayed in the tomb. And then it is resurrected and it meets and creates a connection inside the brain which creates a shift in consciousness and frequency. So the state of vibration, frequency of the organism is so heightened that it overcomes the curses of the 3D matrix. The 3D matrix is chaining the organism to a low frequency. When the anointing rises, when the Christ rises inside you, you separate from it. The addiction to your sin, everything, it's no longer having any appeal to the organism. When that happens, you enter the space of the pituitary and the pineal the pituitary secretes the serotonin, the pineal, a DMT substance. Amber, DMT, milky, serotonin. The land flowing, the promised land flowing with milk and honey. This sacred secretion goes hand in hand with the living of a righteous, pure life, a holy life. There are human organisms in this world who, who share on spiritual truth and it's evident they are anointed with it, but they don't know. You don't necessarily need to know. I know powerful Christian men and women in this world who are anointed clearly, but they don't know that that's what's happened. They don't recognize the oil of gladness anatomically and what it's done inside them. This secretion is born every month from the human organism, 12 times a year. It is born when the moon enters your star sign. I'm born March 30th. I am Aries. At the time where the moon enters Aries, the secretion starts and I feel it. And I am not alone. Those around me, my family, they feel it in themselves on their given day. And many of you are probably feeling it and not recognizing it. It is the giver of vitality, of life. It is the washer away of the curses of the world. Jacob wrestled an angel and dislocated the lower nature, the hip, in the Bible. In doing so, where did he meet God face to face? Peniel. This is Peniel. Goliath was slain by David. 
David took five rounded stones. He conquered the five senses, therefore living in purity. And he subdued the giant by elevating the secretion, striking the giant here. And he brought it down. Let me read you a passage from Revelation. Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, and yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign for ever and ever. This is the secretion. It's a mystic text. It's describing the anatomy. When the moon enters your star sign, I use a site called Lunarium to track this. But when the moon enters into your star sign, the claustrum of your brain creates a secretion, a substance, the chrism, that which you must be anointed with, the oil of gladness, the anointing of the oil of gladness, as it is said in the Bible. That substance is created in the claustrum and then it begins its journey through your central nervous system. It travels through your 33 vertebrae until it reaches your sacral plexus, which is the sacred place. That is what it means. It is sacred. It is the five fused vertebrae. There are no mistakes in God's design. Just as you must, must fuse your five senses, to be able to overcome the lower nature, to preserve the secretion, to preserve the chrism, to return it to that area in your brain that we call the promised land, the pituitary and the pineal, then you too must fuse your five senses. You must overcome the five. It's a new vibration, a new frequency, a new chemical balance of the body. It's a vessel vibrating in a way whereby reality itself shifts and you move to other dimensions within the rooting of this third dimension. All of that untapped power and potential that Yeshua spoke of to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to prophesy, to speak in the language of angels. It's all born in that chrism because that chrism realigns the the vibratory state the emotional state the spiritual state of the vessel now there's still work to do it doesn't do everything for you you might not need to know anything about it you can live well and this will activate in your body this will happen in your body the thing is when you feel this secretion come and the stillness it gives you, the clarity of mind it gives you, the sharpness, the motivation, the, it eliminates procrastination. It just realigns the frequency of your body to be plugged directly into the will of soul. And flesh just takes a knee. Flesh takes a knee in the presence of the Christos the chrism, the sacred secretion, the Christ within you, the flesh, the birthplace of all of the sin that we commit, to fall away, to miss the mark, to live unconsciously. It and all of its energies takes a knee 
in the presence of that internal Christ that is born from the claustrum, is united with a, a psychophysical germ, it's said by the ancients, in, from the sacral plexus, which is five fused vertebrae. Yeshua was wounded five times in, at the age of 33. The 33rd vertebrae in Galilee, which means the place of the skull, when your five senses are united with your soul, not controlling it and owning it. When that happens, the man becomes the Christ. The qualities of Yeshua are born in the human. Anatomically, when that shift in the chemistry of the body and the frequency of the body occurs, and God uses that as part of your anatomy and tool, and it is a biological response to behavior, and it's in us. It's in us, so the gifts of the oil of gladness are not used by the immoral, as far as I can see. And on the way back up through this nervous system, it reaches your 12th cranial nerve. Now, the 12th cranial nerve is a very interesting thing. And even today in science, they say that the fibers emerge from the anterior surface of the medulla oblongata through the sulcus between the pyramid and the olive. Now this is very interesting. Because what I'm interested in here is the olive. Now the Bible, okay, let's pull it back and say the church. The church are very big, for those of you who don't know, on rubbing olive oil on people's heads and saying, you are anointed. This is not the anointing of olive oil. The anointing of olive oil is raising the chrism through your body by living correctly by living cleanly, having a clean, pure heart, being open to service, seeking God earnestly, seeking forgiveness for your wrongs and offering yourself in a life of service and accepting the teachings, which are that of morality, which come from Jesus Christ in the Christian world. This is where the morality guidance comes from. And when you do that, you raise the chrism up through your spinal column until you get to the 12th cranial nerve. And when you get there, the oil passes the olive. The chrism passes through the olive. This is where you are anointed with olive oil. This matters. Rubbing olive oil on your head, we are all mature adults. We know that doesn't do anything. It does nothing. We have made a big mistake. And it's time for us to mature and find out why we made this mistake. And the mistake is that not many of us have a decent enough knowledge. And knowledge is a very powerful thing. Because we need to understand at least our bodies and how they work. So when the chrism passes here, it becomes the olive oil. This is what it is. Now there's something really interesting I find about this is inside the Bible there is a passage in Deuteronomy 28, and I'm going to read it so I get it word for word correct. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast his fruit. So it's telling you, don't anoint yourself with olive oil. It's not for that. This is not going to be of any use to you. Don't bother doing it. It tells you that. But then it moves on in the next sentence. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. 
He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the till. Now, that's describing perfectly what will happen to your children and to yourself if you do not anoint yourself internally with the chrism by living a correct life. Because if you do not raise that chrism and pass it through the olive of the 12th cranial nerve, then you will be subdued by your carnal mind. And your carnal mind is the stranger within you. And the captivity we see today better than ever because ourselves and our children are in captivity of alcohol, in captivity of pornography, in captivity of lies and deceit, in captivity of mindless entertainment, in captivity of drug abuse, in captivity of sexual immorality of other forms. And this is all happening because we have not anointed ourselves. But if we can raise the chrism and anoint ourselves, we free ourselves and our children from captivity. Videos which will be working backwards from now, you understand. There is a fluid in your body. And it is that fluid that the science is based on. And it is the preservation of that fluid which will allow you to activate your pineal. You can stay locked in your sin, saying words over and over and over again. You can also stay locked in your arrogance of, I'm important, I have uh, conquered this, I have conquered that, and build an image of your spiritual attributes when they are nothing but dust to God, for God gave way for your power. But ultimately the vessel that is empty and is anointed with the oil of gladness that vessel will hear God's voice and that vessel, that organism will find out what God had in store for that organism. The organism does not need to be embodied by a nationality, a persona, any of that. The body needs to be embodied by the will of God, the love of God. I am a Christian mystic. If any label is going to fit this human organism and the things it says. But I understand that man is saved by grace, meaning God loves them no matter what. But I also understand that man is empowered by certain ways of being by overcoming the world to the best of the capacity he has. For we are in a human organism that has a hacked element of it, a fallen element, an element of the psyche that's supposed to protect us, that's been trained so heavily, the sense of self, the self-image, that we believe that's all we are. We lose track that we are the loving awareness of God, and that was built onto it. We are the loving witness of Christ in this world. And our persona only conditions that love. Our self-image conditions that love and so it must be wiped out. And you will have a shadow, you will fall back to the world. But you will understand as I do that when that secretion is in, the temptations of the world, the curse of that temptation of the world has no grip. Because the frequency of the organism is high enough that it is moving in the vibration where the allure of the world, the vibration of the angelic maybe, are touching it. Where the allure of the world and sin has nothing over it. For frequency and vibration is the language of God. So you can do things because the Bible says you're supposed to. 
or you can do things because the energy of Christ is in you and has opened every cell of you up to its unconditioned love and you have no choice but to or you can do both for you will fall from that state of consciousness naturally because the technology of the body does that to you and there you can be taking your thoughts captive and reminding the self in that lower vibratory field that you will move into what it should be doing but make, make no mistake this was kept secret for the largest statue of a pine cone in the world is in Vatican City the Pope carries a staff with a pine cone on it just as Osiris did just as Dionysus did Yeshua, his teachings, the sacred secretion, the oil of gladness, and living pure in purity and holiness. They all go hand in hand. And the result is that the Christic energy begins to animate the desires, the intelligence, the actions, the speech, the heart of the human organism and so it all points back to you moving in this world as a better man or a better woman who can love without condition more easily for the self which conditions the love is gone the frequencies which dragged you back to the sins of the world have been largely overcome there's still some discipline needed This is the sacred secretion. This is the Christ. This is what Yeshua brought to the world. This is what is owed to you to know God's presence directly. Here now, in the next five minutes, to know God's voice. No belief needed. God bless guys, be well.